this Sunday morning, God is good, he's faithful, he's constant, he's dependable. And we're just so grateful that we are his children and he's our father. Um, it was a different kind of worship this morning. I was wondering what uh, uh, Mfan was up to when I first heard the first song, but I, I see that everybody <laughs> enjoyed it. <laughs> Praise God forevermore. God is faithful. That's the whole essence of worship. All right. Uh, I'm going to share very briefly. I'm going to take too much time this morning because I want this to be a believer's meeting. Um, the Bible says when we come together, somebody has a word, somebody has a song, somebody has a, a prophecy. We all should be able to share. All right. This is not going to be like regular Sunday services anymore. All right. It will be a believer's meeting where we sit down and we talk to one another and we share our week, we share our concerns, we pray together, and we, we dismiss. Uh, and this is how it will be until we get our building. God said on the 24th of March that he will give us another building and it is going to be easy. I'm holding on to that word and I hope you're doing the same thing too. Glory to God. I want to talk to us very briefly uh, out of Luke chapter 19. Luke 19, praise God. Hallelujah. Give you a quick minute to get to it. Father, your word is eternal. Your word is sure. It is unchanging. Yet it is capable of changing anything, anyone, and any situation. Let your word go forth with simplicity or with clarity and with boldness and with much assurance that you who remain the same will do a work in our hearts today. And let the lessons that we'll learn from the life of this man show us how to practically apply it in our lives. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Luke 19, reading from verse 1. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. He sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press, because he was little of stature. And he ran before and climbed up the sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying, that he was gone to be guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house, for so much as he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Amen. Now, this man called Zacchaeus was a publican. And a publican was a Jew that worked for the Roman government. Um, they were in charge of exacting taxes from people. And they were not very much liked. But the rest of the Jewish people, they felt like they were traitors. Uh, they were they were tools of oppression that Rome was using at that time to exact upon Israel, forgetting that they set themselves up and put themselves in that situation because God's plan for them was not to be in servitude to anyone for any reason. So the Bible says Jesus entered into Jericho. And it's interesting that the Bible lets us know the particular city that he entered into because this city had a history. He entered into uh, 
the city. He passed through Jericho. Pretty sure he must have had uh, an altern alternate route or route, as Americans would say, that he would have passed uh, to wherever he was going. But he chose to pass through Jericho because he had a divine appointment with this man called Zacchaeus. Oftentimes, we don't know what God is doing in our lives. We don't know why he's moving the way he's moving or why he's not moving as we suppose, because there's never a time that God is not moving in the life of his child. The fact that you sleep and you wake up, that was God's yeah, move. Yeah. Uh -huh. You could have died overnight. The fact that you go out for whatever and you come back in, that's God moving. You could have had a car wreck. Anything could have happened. So when we talk about God moving, don't in looking for the spectacular, miss the supernatural. Because the supernatural is not always spectacular. God is not in the business of announcing himself. He doesn't have to. He's God all by himself. But he had a divine appointment with Zacchaeus. And I know that because we'll see in the verses that we're going to break down and, and get all the truth and understanding that the Spirit of God gives us from this passage of Scripture. Just like he had a divine appointment with a woman at the well, he knew she would be there at 12 noon. That's why he went there. The Bible tells us, if you remember, I've taught it before, the Bible says he must needs go through Samaria. Those are places that ordinarily a Jewish man wouldn't go to. Samaria was in the northern kingdom. And the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom had been at it since Jeroboam and Rehoboam's days. The Jewish people didn't have anything to do with them. They didn't go through their land because they felt if you went through their land, you would be defiled. But Jesus had a divine appointment with that woman and he went to the specific place that he knew she would be at, at that specific hour. Go back and refresh your, your, your minds with that teaching. All right? So in the same way, Jesus had an appointment, a divine appointment for Zacchaeus, just that Zacchaeus didn't know it. All right? The Bible lets us to know that he was wealthy. He was a publican and he was wealthy. And we know the reason why he was wealthy, because the publicans were exacting beyond the taxes. We know that when we come down to the last couple of verses that I read, we'll see. So his money was not legitimately made. All right. He sought to see Jesus, who Jesus was, was. So we know that the fame of Jesus had spread and he had heard about this Jewish person that was raising the dead, opening blind eyes, on stopping deaf ears and doing tremendous stuff. So he wanted to know Jesus. And he had also probably found out the kind of press that followed Jesus around, the kind of crowd that followed Jesus around. You remember the story of the woman with the issue of blood. The Bible says she fought her way through the press until she got to Jesus and touched the hem of his garment and the fountain of the blood dried up after 12 years of spending all of her money. He knew the kind of crowd that followed Jesus and he knew that he had limitations. Like you and I, we have limitations in life, but we don't quit because of those limitations. We don't sit down because of those limitations, right? He saw to Jesus who he was and he could not for the press. Child of God, what's that challenge in front of you this morning? That's stopping you from getting to where you want to get to or do what it is that you want to do? What is it? Is it a person? Is it by reason of your birth and lineage? Is it by reason of your race or the country you are from? What's the limitation? I walk around knowing fully well that the greater one dwells on the inside of me. I do not understand the word no. I don't. And I don't accept no. Because no today is not necessarily no tomorrow. So you can say no today, but I'm coming back. 
and I'm going to keep coming back, especially if I know that this is what God has said about a given situation. I do not know how to quit. The crowd was a limitation. The Bible lets us know that he was little of stature, Danny DeVito. Probably stood at 5'3 or something like that. <laughs> Praise God. Right? He was of little stature. So what did he do? He could have sat down and said, well, I'll never get to see him. Jewish people are tall. I just happen to be stunted in my growth. There's no use trying. He ran ahead. Child of God, I don't care what the limitation is, is in, in, in your life. You've got to look for a way. Uh, there's a song we used to sing back in the day when I was little. Too high. You can't get over it too low. You can't get under it too wide. You can't get around it. So go through the door. There must be a way. I don't care what anybody's saying. And if you go at life with that attitude, nothing will be impossible to you. As a matter of fact, the word impossible, breaking into uh, syllables, says I'm possible. So I don't understand impossible. The Bible says all things are possible. And I've shown you this example. For those of you who are just hearing this for the first time, and to reinforce you that I've heard it before, all right? All things are possible to him. This is him who believes. With God, all things are possible. All things are possible to him who believes. With God, all things are possible. By simple deduction, the him who believes is God. And we are God. Psalm 82 verse 6 tells us that. Little G's. Not the almighty God. But because we're his children, we are like him. Jesus Christ even said, he said, as, as he is, so are we in the world. Somebody help me with that scripture. Thank you, Lord. As he is, so are we in the world. So what in the world can stop you? Mention it, a man like yourself that breathes, someone in authority, when the Bible says the heart of kings is in God's hands, and like rivers of water, he turns it whithersoever he wills, and I am his child, you will change your mind. There's no question about that in my mind. He was of little stature, so he ran ahead of the press. You've got to look for a way to get around that challenge. I don't care what it is. There's a way around it, over it, under it, through it. Somehow or the other, you're going to get to the other side. That's the attitude you should have. That's why at 66, I am still as stubborn as I am. And I'm the chief stubborn officer of this ministry. Praise God forevermore. <laughs> did, you, did you guys get Alvin? <laughs> Amen. Right? He did something about his limitation. He ran ahead of the press. Not only that, he climbed up a tree. So what is it you want? that is difficult and you're giving up or you have given up, go and dust that thing off of the shelf and bring it back down and pursue it again. Glory to God. My house sold yesterday. Uh, you didn't hear me. What did you want? Hallelujah. You gotta Amen. keep speaking it. I don't care what it looks like. <laughs> keep speaking it. He was begging me to pay. I can show I can show the people here the text between me and this gentleman. I withdrew my offer from the table. Look at me bluffing. <laughs> Talking about you in the United States of America. Why don't we wait until you come so we can sign the papers? I said, if you don't take my offer right now, it's off the table. Shut he came back and paid. 
talking about uh, uh, what, what about your children? Uh, what, what if something happens to you and they come and they say it was never sold? I said the offer is off the table. The Naira is too volatile. I'm, I'm, uh, this is in dollars. If you don't take the offer now, by the time we come back, whatever the Naira is saying is what I'm going to apply. The Naira is the Nigerian currency. Keep speaking it. Keep saying it. It must change. He ran ahead of the press, number one. Number two, he climbed up a sycamore tree to see him. Number three, uh, for he was to pass that way. How did he find out that Jesus was going to pass that particular way? He must have made inquiries. He had his ear to the ground. He didn't go and wait on, on Westheimer and Jesus went down on Richmond. No. He must have made inquiries. So I don't care what the challenge is. Sit down and think. The Bible says you know more than your teachers. You understand more than the ancients. Listen, child of God, you are at a super advantage. Because the greater one dwells on the inside of you. Isn't that what the Bible says? Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So what is the challenge in the world that the greater one on the inside of me cannot put me over? The only thing God cannot do is what prayer cannot do. And as long as I have my mouth and my breath and I can pray, you better believe it will change. One, he ran ahead. Two, he climbed the sycamore tree. Three, he had made inquiries. He knew exactly where Jesus was going to pass. Child of God, Jesus is not passing anywhere. He's living on the inside of you. So what's your problem? We're not looking for where he's going to pass. I, I carry him around 24-7. I throw up, he shows up. Glory to God. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up. That's how I know that Jesus had a divine appointment with him. He came to the place. He knows exactly where you are. He has your home address. He came to the place where Zacchaeus was and he knew that Zacchaeus was up on that tree. Came to the place and he looked up and saw him and said, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down for today. Oh my God. Somebody said today. today. Not tomorrow. Today. today. That program today. is today. 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 That today. situation handled. Today. today. That money coming. Today. <laughs> that sickness leaves. Today. Hallelujah. That pain leaves. Today. Hallelujah. That sorrow goes. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Today. He oh, knows exactly you. where thank you Jesus. are. Thank you, God. Have your way. Guys, February of 1992, I've told you before. He told me, he said, I will prosper you in real estate. I didn't even have one brick to my name when he said that. Not a brick. And if I begin to tell you the stuff he's done with me in real estate, you won't believe it. Hold on tenaciously to what he has told you. He doesn't change. And he's not a man that he should lie. And he doesn't, he doesn't, one way this today, another way tomorrow, no. He's constant. He said, I am the Lord, I change not. Today, I must abide at your house. Listen to the choice of words. Abide. That means move in, live in, stay with. Take up permanent residence, which is what the Holy Ghost has done in you. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. 
You're not an ordinary man. Not by any stretch of anyone's imagination. You know that, that saying in Texas when they say don't mess with Texas? It should actually say don't mess with a Christian. A Christian who knows who they are in Christ, don't mess with them. He made us, he came down and received him joyfully. When the people saw it, it's natural. They began to murmur. <laughs> it's natural. When people see what God is doing, there'll be those who will murmur. There'll be those who will rejoice with you because they love the Lord as well. But get ready, people are going to talk about you. It's only the dead we don't talk about. They're going to talk about you. She thinks she's that. She thinks she's this. Yes, I am all of that and more. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. <laughs> when they saw it, the old man was saying that he was going to be a guest with a man that is a sinner. Guess what? Sinners are his friend. Because they never remain sinners once they befriend him. I told you that song by this uh, very popular Christian singer, a, a, a saint is just a sinner who fell down, is garbage. <laughs> that's the word that's trending now. Absolute nonsense. If you're a sinner, you're a sinner. If you're a saint, you're a saint. You don't be a saint one day and become unsainted the next day. No. Yeah, we may fall because we're still grappling with the flesh, but saints we are, as long as the blood has cleansed us. There's a difference between falling inadvertently than being in habitual sin. And that song was sung because this gentleman is in habitual sin. Simple and straightforward. I'm gonna say it, I don't care whose ox is gored. They began to murmur. Notice that Zacchaeus did not pay them any mind. Verse 8. Zacchaeus stood and faced Jesus. What are they saying? Those things are designed to distract you. He wasn't paying attention to what they were saying. He faced Jesus squarely. He said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. The very presence of the son of the living God. Made this man begin to recant and confess sin. Who talked to him about sin? Jesus said, I'm coming to dine with you. Jesus didn't even ch chastise him or recall any of the things that he had done. But when you encounter the living God, you cannot remain the same. It's impossible. That's why I keep telling you, I don't sin. And you can say the same thing too. I've told you the difference between iniquity, sin, and trespass. Iniquity is when you sit down. Iniquity is when you sit down, you craft it in your mind, you plan it, and you execute it. That's iniquity. That's the one God will not stand for. Trespass is when I go beyond the boundaries he has set for me. And because I'm in this flesh, I'm still dealing with it. It's, it's dead. The Bible says there's no good thing in the flesh. It's completely corrupt. That's why you must walk in the spirit. So that you do not you do not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Put that scripture up for me. Walk in the spirit is an act of determination. It's a choice. I can choose to live in the flesh. I'm single. If I want one man every night, I can get it. I'm not ugly. It's a deliberate thing to walk in the spirit. I hold conversations with God 
24-7. I'm constantly talking to him. And if you practice the presence of God by speaking to him every time, you won't have time to, to, to devise stuff in your mind. The very presence of Jesus Christ convicted him. If he's living inside you, it should be difficult for you to do anything wrong. It should be. Before you say that four-letter word, before you cast somebody out, his very presence in you makes it difficult. You cannot bless with this mouth and curse with the same mouth. James tells us that. So if you carry his presence and you're conscious of the fact that he's with you 24-7, what time do you have been angry at someone? What time do you have saying what you ought not to say? What time do you have crafting stuff you want to do? Says half of my goods. And the Bible says this man was rich. Yet to make up for all the mess he had been doing, he was willing to part with half of what he owned. I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, that's how he became rich. So if this guy has a fishing business and his thanks to Caesar was a thousand dollars, Zacchaeus would write 10,000. And what could you do? And he'd have the soldiers pick you up for evasion of taxes. So if he told you your tax is 10,000, who are you going to argue with? He was capable of putting you in jail. So he knew exactly what he was doing, extorting money from people. Right? Said so if I'm taking anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. That also tells me that Zacchaeus knew the law. Exodus 22. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Exodus chapter 22, and it reads, If a man steal an ox or a sheep and kill it or sell it, he shall restore five oxen for an ox and four sheep for a sheep. He knew the law of restoration. One of the five laws of prosperity. And I've taught it. Go and look for the, 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 the teaching on YouTube and listen to it again. There are five laws that govern prosperity. One of it is the law of rest restoration. You borrow money and you don't pay it back. You're a thief. If I come to your library, am I going to find James's book in your library? A loan is a loan. A gift is a gift. He knew the law that if you take anything illegally from someone or you take something and you don't return it, you give it back fourfold. So he knew the law. I mean the law of God, not the Roman law. Jesus said to him, this day is salvation come to this house for so much as he also is a son of Abraham. Salvation is for everybody. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, card blanche, whosoever believeth in him shall not perish. Jesus didn't disqualify him because he knew how he lived and he knew what he was doing. He didn't disqualify him. He took salvation to him. God never waits for us to repent first. He comes to you with the gift of salvation. It's there already. The day you realize that that gift is there and you come to him, then you receive it. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Again, let me go through the limitations. And I've finished. Number one, his name was Zacchaeus. And one of the meanings of that name is squeezed. Squeezed or constrained. Imagine being called squeezed all your life. No wonder he was short. His name was a problem. And a lot of people named their kids 
I don't even know. It's like they drop a spoon. And whatever the spoon sounds like is what they call the kid. Be deliberate in the names you give your children. Because you're going to call that person by that name for all of their lives. His name was a limitation. That's why Jabez cried that God should change his name. If you don't know the meaning of your name, I suggest you get another one. I don't care how old you are already. In 2014, God told me to change my name. And I argued and I argued and I gave reasons why I cannot. I got married early. Uh, I've been I've been that name longer than I than I've been my father's name. Yada 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 da. I kept making excuses. My son was rich and famous. If I change my name, people will know I'm his mom. I want people to know I'm nonsense. Since 2014, and I argued with the Lord till 2020. When I finally changed my name. And he, he, he even gave me wisdom. Because although it's a name change. It's the same name. I dropped the suffix. And I picked the prefix. So all my documents and all my papers. Still have the same name on it. Other than my last name that I changed. Change your name. And be called by what you want to be. And if you cannot change your name, look for an alliance that's going to speak what you want. His second limitation was his stature. And we've looked at what he did. He ran ahead of the crowd. He climbed up a tree. And he had done his inquiries. All right. The third limitation was the crowd. And child of God, you will do yourself a lot of good if you stop listening to the crowd. Social media has messed a lot of people up. You're swayed by what you see. You're swayed by what you hear. You're swayed by what you even feel. And if you recall the teaching on the 15 senses of the total man, your emotions are the most useless of all the 15 senses. That's what puts us in trouble. So we've got to learn how to master our emotions. I didn't say mask. I said master. Another song we used to sing back in the day. I'm not moved by what I see. Hallelujah. I'm not moved by what I hear. Hallelujah. I'm not moved by what I feel. Hallelujah. I'm only moved by the word of God. Hallelujah. The word and nothing else. My bank account says what it wants to say. But my God supplies all of my needs. If I had despaired before the sale of my house. And you know in Africa is cash. Glory to God. <laughs> Amen. If I despaired before the sale of the house. And if I started to speak all kinds of rubbish out of my mouth, where would I be today? You got to say what you believe, not what you see, not what you hear, not what you feel, not what social media is saying, not what anybody is saying. The only person that has the right to speak into my life is the Holy Ghost. The press was an impediment. Opinions of people. I told you when we were talking about the 15 senses, I can mess someone's day up without even saying a word. I walk into your space and I look at you up and down like you are some whatever. And you, you why, why did she look at me like that? What did I do? What did I say? I have taken control of your emotions. And for the rest of the morning, possibly the whole day, you're wondering what I did to Pastor Moon that she would look at me with such contempt. Without saying a word, I've messed up your entire day. That's why you cannot give the reins, R-E-I-N-S, of your emotions to another human being. I don't care if that person is your husband, wife, mother, father, sister, brother, whatever. What has God got to say about you? That's what counts. 
People's opinions do not matter. Another limitation, he lived in a city called Jericho. Come to Joshua, Joshua 6. Joshua 6, you remember when Joshua went to fight Jericho? After they took Jericho, listen to what Joshua said. Verse 26. And Joshua adjured them at that time. Let me back up so that it makes sense. Verse 24. And they burnt the city with fire. Joshua raised, R-A-Z-E-D. He raised the city. He burnt it with fire and all that was therein. Only the silver and the gold and the vessels of brass and of iron they put into the treasury of the house of the Lord. Every other thing he burnt. And Joshua saved Rahab, the harlot, alive, and her father's household, and all that she had. And she dwelleth in Israel even unto this day, because she hid the messengers which Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. And she's even in Jesus' genealogy. Go and look at Matthew chapter 1. But the city, verse 26, and Joshua adjured them at that time, saying, Cursed be the man before the Lord that riseth up and buildeth this city, Jericho. He shall lay the foundation thereof in his firstborn, and in his youngest son shall he set up the gates of it. So the Lord was with Joshua, and his fame was noised throughout all the country. So Joshua cursed Jericho. He said, whoever rebuilds Jericho, the day he starts, his firstborn will die. The day he finishes building the city and hangs up the gate, his last bone will die. That curse is so powerful that even God Almighty, and hear me well, suffered from the curse. What do I mean? The broken down walls of your life and my life, the raised life of you and I, that the devil had done whatever he wanted to do with us. Because without Christ, we're hell bound. The day he built my life back up, March of 1976, Jesus died. And the day I closed my eyes in glory, when he has finished with this mortal being, and I stand before him, Jesus died. Because Jesus is his firstborn, and Jesus is his last born. That curse was so strong. And this man was living in a cursed city. Listen, where you live matters. Some of you, God told you to move. You haven't moved. I'm sorry for you. Some of you, God has told you to leave that job. But because of fear, you don't want to live. Yeah, 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 you're thinking, how am I going to manage? Who made you a manager? God said, go. He told Abraham, go to a place I will show you. He didn't even tell him, go to X, Y, Z. That's why he's the father of faith. He set out not knowing where he was going. Child of God, you got to jump. And you have to believe that he will catch you. I don't know how many times I have jumped. If I perish, I perish. I know my ultimate destination is heaven. I'm not going anywhere else. What's in this life that I'm holding on to? If he says tonight, I'm ready. Been there, done that, won the t-shirt. He lived in a cursed city. Jericho in scriptures is a type of the world. You and I are in this world, and this world has nothing to offer us. The way we panic over stuff, you would wonder. I told somebody, because I had to drive very late at night when I was moving my stuff from one house to the other, uh, emptying the building. And the, the gentleman said to me, you mean you drove 
all the way from Lagos to this place at that time? Aren't you afraid? I said, no. I'm not afraid of anything. As a matter of fact, I'm more afraid, if at all, of being alive and having issues than dying. Because if I die, I know where I'm going. Jericho is a type of the world, and who wants to be in this world? Don't get me wrong, I'm not suicidal, not by any stretch of anyone's imagination. But what is in this world? What does it have to offer? What? And then the last one, the limitations on Zacchaeus. I've given you his name, I've given you his stature, I've given you the crowd. I'm giving you his location. The last one, his reputation. His reputation was a limitation. Nobody liked him. Everybody knew that he was a liar. Everybody knew that he was a thief. Everybody knew he exacted what he wasn't supposed to exact from the children of God. But the day he encountered Christ, his story became history. His story became his story because he walked away from all of that lifestyle and he embraced the son of God and he became saved. Because Jesus said, I came to seek and to save the lost. If you're here this morning and you're hearing me, and you're not really sure that your salvation is secure, this is the time. This is the time to talk to the Lord. Because if you're saved, you know you're saved. Someone asked me, are you a woman? 100%, I know that I'm a woman. I'm not, I'm not guessing or wondering, am I really... So if you're a Christian, you know that you're a Christian. If you're born again, you know that you're born again. If there's any inkling of a doubt in your mind, this is the time. He said, all that come to me, I will in no wise cast out. Romans chapter 8. I beg your pardon, chapter 10. From verse 8 to 13, talks about it. It says, it's with your mouth, confession is made to salvation. It is with your heart. That you believe unto righteousness. It's a simple prayer. Confess his lordship. Believe that he died on that cross for you. And his righteousness will be imputed to you. It's a free gift. All you're required to do is receive it by saying it. Father, thank you. The entrance of your word brings light. It brings illumination. It brings understanding. Thank you that those who need to fix things with you, your word has gone forth. Thank you that those who are standing by this self-same word, you will keep them standing till the end. Lord, help us to see that we are invincible together with Christ. Help us to see and to understand that there is no situation that is going to come up in our lives, that's not common to man. And alongside that situation, you have provided a way of escape. We just have to look beside it. Father, help us to stand and to stand strong, even with the depravity that's in the world today. Help us to be bold in our faith and to speak the truth of the word of God without fear or favor. Thank you, Spirit of God, because you will ignite this fire afresh in us. We will not be silent and we will not be quiet. We will tell as many as we come in contact with about the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Thank you for the power that re resides on the inside of us. Thank you for the grace and the anointing that we carry. And thank you that we take off every limitation. Someone make me a t-shirt that says no more limitations. 
Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.